What's going on, boys? It's Daddy Big back at it once more. Feeling a little delirious today. Thought I'd thought I'd sit down with my best, my my main boy, Sam. You know, <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> he, he is back. Dare I say, baby got back, but that's <laughs> baby back ribs. On oh, God. <laughs> all right so but yeah this was kind of a more a more light-hearted topic I, I i expect it to be who knows where we'll veer into the philosophical natures mm. of life but i think this will be a little on the easier side but um by this point this will be like almost april by the time this video goes up Jesus and crazy. i'm gonna make a talking <laughs> it four months in the past to you guys but i will have made a talking video by then Kind of, kind of breaking this down personally. I'll probably link that down below, but um, but no um, it's kind of a really, it was just a small experience I had, in my in my room right, which is where I spend a lot of my time. I have overhead lights, you know. It's like a drop ceiling. I, I live in a basement, <laughs> mm-hmm. and um, it, all the other lights in my in my basement are adjustable, but the ones in my room aren't, because the wiring just isn't built for it. So I find those lights to be too bright, and I hate bright lighting. Like I deal with it at school, like at schools and all that kind of like, like buildings like that. But when it comes to being home, I really love dim lighting and it just makes me feel comfortable and cozy Mm -hmm. and it's easy on my eyes. And I don't know, it just, it's always really comforting for me. And um, so, yeah, I never keep the lights in my room on, but I have a single lamp that I put up on a high dresser that kind of illuminates the whole room quite dimly, you know. But it's next to my desk, so it works. Mm-hmm. And um, I used to have like a 40 to 60 watt bulb that was like white warm, right? So it was actually almost a yellow light, practically. Hmm. It was very warm and pretty dim, too. And I loved that feel for the longest time. And then that light bulb died. And then I went to go get the other one, but then I realized that I had also used that one and just put it back in the container because I'm an asshole. Mm-hmm. But, <laughs> but no, so I... I I had to go find a different kind of light bulb and I ended up with this other one and I screwed it in and I was instantly blinded because I was looking directly <laughs> yeah. at it, not to the shade, but, um, it was also quite a bit brighter than my other bulb and also was quite a bit colder too. It was much whiter mm-hmm. and like I said, brighter as well. And I actually ended up exchanging that for one that was slightly dimmer, but of the same quality. And, um, you know, for me, this was really weird. But kind of, I, I was able to read books a little better, you know, I, I it, the other light was a little dim for that. But um, just, I like I said, I spend so much time at my desk working, gaming, working, like every almost all the work I do for this channel is there, mm-hmm. you know. And it seems so insignificant, but that little change in the light bulb completely changed my perspective on my room. And it just made things feel so different. So that's kind of just what I wanted to talk about here. It's just talking to Sam, expanding on this whole idea of how those small little changes can make big differences in your perspective on things, you know? Mm-hmm. And d- did you have, did I inspire you to conjure up any examples of your own here? <laughs> um, so I'd say actually, like, I- I'm I'm kind of the same way in that, like, the, like, general kind of, like, a- aesthetics, I guess that's the word that feels so, like... <laughs> Yeah. generic but like gen like genuinely like the kind of the aesthetics you're exposed to throughout the day and stuff like that and they do have such like a big like impact just on your like state of mind and stuff so like recently like uh due to the courtesy of uh um someone in my uh, creative writing class i uh figured out that i can actually change between backgrounds on my phone which was a uh feature that was like completely foreign to me before and i feel a little stupid for not knowing it <laughs> um <laughs> maybe a, maybe just a little just just, just a little <laughs> but um n- now that i know it uh just depending on my mood i can like just like switch through that to fit something that like i feel suits me for the day and will actually just like be uh, pleasing or like comforting to me throughout that and it, yeah like just as you were talking about that it just clicked to me like like that oh like that's the reason that i do that because it's just a matter of finding something that is like uh like comforting to you that like is um you know just more pleasant and like i i don't know how much of a an impact the background of my phone really has on my day but it is a small difference that i you know find some find some comfort or some uh 
I don't know, pleasure in. So, yeah. yeah. And, and, I mean, us humans are, are funny little critters, right? <laughs> like, my dad, bless his heart, is probably the most methodical man I have ever met in my life. He does everything in life, like, somewhat in slow motion. But really, he just he does everything so fluidly, you know? Everything is so systematic. Hmm. You know, he's an accountant, works the 9 to 5 on that grind. And for him, I remember this was more a thing when I was, like, a kid that, like, we, um, our family would always kind of poke fun at him for. But he would just, like, do these goofy little things to, like, to like change things up in his life, you know? Like, I remember specific, one of the only examples I can really think of is... um. Like, I remember at one point he had this whole thing where he, would, like, named different breakfast meals he would make for himself. He would have, like, the he would call it, like, the farmer's breakfast or, like, the sunny scramble or just, like, stuff like that, you know? I love that. And I guess, I guess recently what he started doing is making himself breakfast skillets, he'll call them. Mm. He'll get out of his big cast iron pan and um, just throw a bunch of... He'll throw eggs and cheese and sweet potatoes and avocado and chorizo sausage and other sausages, a bunch of stuff. Mm-hmm. And then just make it up and make himself burrito throughout the week, you know? Hmm. It's just like, and like, I totally get that. You know what I mean? Like, especially like in, in food, you know, mm-hmm. having those little different, it just, I don't know. It's just little variations in your day, you mm-hmm. know? And I think that, that might be partly why, like, I love and continue to replay for hundreds of hours games mm-hmm. like Terraria because like, they're so dynamic, mm-hmm. you know? There's a like there's a distinct comfort in the familiarity of it, mm-hmm. but every time your experience is different because things are random, you know. Yeah. And I mean that's why randomness is such a huge part of games is because it's familiarity, yet it's that unpredictability that makes things engaging. Yeah. And I think there, there's yeah. a similar element in life, where you know, even just the smallest of differences in your routine can just totally shake things up Mm -hmm. and just make your life exciting and like it seems kind of dumb but like everyone does it you know what i mean yeah it's finding those little little moments of like novelty just to like yeah exactly yeah just to entertain yourself and just keep things new like i remember um uh, uh tech week of uh outsiders um they let us off on friday early which was such a blessing it was like great not it wasn't was it friday uh I don't remember. It was the la- last official day of Tech Week for Outsiders. Uh, w- sorry, I- if you don't know, that's that's the play that I was in. Sorry, I'm like speaking very locally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, the day after, I just I um, no, it was the day of the day of because we actually had free time. Uh, I went. You want to know what? I'm gonna go on a walk. Mm-hmm. And for the record, I never go on walks. If I'm doing something, that's I'll go crazy. on. A, I'll go. I on love a, walks. Yeah, I'll go on a bike ride or I'll go on a drive. Like that's just mm-hmm. like kind of my thing. But I just I just went on a walk because I'm like I never do this and I'm going to do this just because I feel like it. And so I did that. And just having this random novel thing amidst a lot of like busyness and like you know semi like monotony was just one of the most refreshing things for me. So it's it's little things like that, you know. Yeah, and I guess like kind of like that whole idea of like breaking the monotony i feel like one example i could think of is like i've had the same five cds in my car since i bought it (laughs) and um actually by the time this podcast comes out i christmas will have been five months ago but like i um one of my favorite bands is tally hall as i mentioned before and their second cd good and evil is actually it's available now Hmm. i've like been able to find it because i heard that they were going to press it and actually just like make it this year hmm. and i never really heard about it like that was like last year and i was looking for it but now they're like out there hmm. so for christmas i'm really hoping that i can snag a couple and keep one in my car hmm. and like that will in itself be a huge difference of <laughs> yeah. being able to experience that new music but like it's i i haven't really listened to their second album at all because i'm trying to hmm. save myself for the experience of the cd <laughs> <Nice>. but um <laughs> but no like that's a big thing for me is like all of the again, it's like all the music is familiar, comforting, mm-hmm. but just that small little thing of hearing like, like hearing my favorite song on the album, mm-hmm. you know, or like just like th- those little things like driving to school or driving to work or whatever, and just hearing a good song. Yeah, and also like knowing what song is next and think being able to like think about that. Yeah, you know, and you when I get what? back in my car, I can I can pump to some jams. You know? <laughs> yeah, uh, and the funny thing is, you're talking about that stuff, and I'm going. Um, I actually had this. Uh, this thing that I do every single month where I'll start a new playlist from the ground up 
where I'll um uh, I'll carry over uh five songs from the last month's playlist, and I'll I'll take those, and then I have to discover all new music to put on that playlist to build it. Really, that. that's cool. I I've never I mm. never heard you doing that. Yeah, and I'll usually I'll end up with like uh like twenty five to thirty songs. So it's not like the like the biggest playlist or anything. But I'll always do that, and I'll take my five like favorites or like just like a comfort song. I've had one that's been on there. It's uh, "Maple Syrup" by the by the Backseat Lovers that I've had on for like four months now, and um, it'll always just get carried through. And it's just the process of like, you know, I, I guess it's like almost like you said, the kind of that balance between like comfort and novelty. But it it forces me to branch out and like you know just find these like little new things to entertain myself and keep things fresh. No, it's really cool. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that idea I kind of brought up emerging about the, that you just mentioned the difference between comfort and novelty mm-hmm. or the balance of it rather. I think that again, it's like one of those things where you never expect to think about that until you sit down and make a podcast about yeah. it. But like, <laughs> I think that's a really interesting idea because like, I think that's what makes these little changes in our lives. So, so amusing, so appealing, so, so like interesting to us is that there is that huge degree of familiarity to it yet there's enough different about it to make it interesting and to make it fun Mm -hmm. and like i said like with video games that have like 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 a really good like roguelike or something you know or Mm -hmm. rogue i don't know if it's roguelite or rogue like i'm a fake gamer but like for for those for those of you don't know such as sam (laughs) it's basically a type of game where um when you die, you die and you restart, hmm. like from from scratch. And usually mm-hmm. they're shorter experiences. Like you can beat it in like an hour or something. Gotcha. But um, but or or just like a game like Terraria, that's like a longer kind of RPG, but still has random elements. Mm-hmm. Or even like a board game like Betrayal on House of the Hill. Hmm. Part of what makes that game super fun is that the house is different every time, hmm. and there's a huge deck of cards, and you never know. Yeah. Or just any other board like backgammon you know mm-hmm. again it's much simpler and much less random in the same way that a video game would be or betrayal would be mm-hmm. but you know n- not knowing if you're going to get that critical role and put your opponent on the bar or get lucky and not get slammed hmm. like that's what makes that game so fun <laughs> also you have like i've said before you have to kind of be an asshole to like <laughs> playing it but that's a different story yeah but i get but what like, you're talking about like, yeah like that it really there really is that idea of comfort versus novelty Mm -hmm. you know and balancing those two out yeah and um yeah just as you're mentioning like games and stuff like i I don't play like that many games but one game that i uh have played like kind of on and off for a while is a hearthstone the uh card game Hmm. and um i think i've i think i've heard of that before it's fun like a mobile game uh it can be i I play it on my computer but like i I think i I I think you can get it on i feel like i've heard of that yeah it's really fun um and yeah genuinely like there's a reason that like you know the the quintessential like 30 card deck is like such a intrinsic part of that because you're always going to get like a novel experience out of playing so i think it's yeah there's a yeah, lot of for like sure. it, there's for sure. a there's a general appeal to like you know just those little bits of novelty for us as people yeah for sure i guess just like another thing too is like to kind of get to some really specific nerdy examples (laughs) it's like in a game like terraria where items are like randomly dropped and some of them are really rare you know like you can you can go through all of the effort of getting rare items and sometimes it can take a long time and that can be frustrating but other times when like you're trying to get a rare item and you get it really fast or you do get it at all Mm -hmm. that's just like a huge rush Hmm. like no matter how long you've played the game you know like if you get like a frozen turtle shell or like get your last onk shield part or <laughs> or like i guess now in the most recent updates which were five months ago as of uploading like when they changed the fledgling wings from standard sky chest loot to being a one in 40 drop it's like that's not the kind of thing you're going to be getting normally but when you do get it it's like a really novel experience ooh, ooh, you know i've got an actual example yeah i played that game like five years ago with my cousin right, broken right. hero swords yeah. Those drops, that's a, right? That's a rare drop? I mean, not really. <laughs> Shit. Damn it. I but, thought I was really onto something. No, it's like, um, <laughs> no, it's like, they're pretty, they're pretty easy to get if you like know where to find them. But no, I get, I, it's well, kind as of. a stupid, dumb, dumb child, like that's a pretty rare drop, right? But no, I so guess that, a stupid, a dumb, dumb, dumb child. Yeah. That's really mm-hmm. exciting. Yeah. There you go. But like, <laughs> I guess it, it's satisfying in a different way where you get the Terra Blade and that's mm. fun. Mm-hmm. But. But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> maybe maybe get away from the the gamer examples a little bit. Mm-hmm. But but yeah, like 
I guess that's an interesting comparison to draw between the novelty and the comfort and the of things. Comfort. Yeah, yeah, and it's interesting too because actually going like way back to just like lighting, um, for a while back, um, during like COVID during that lockdown, uh, my room was so boring looking. It was awful. It was just gray all the time. It was just mm-hmm. blech. Um, and so eventually I'm like, I need to do something about this. And I actually got some LEDs, which mm-hmm. I, uh, like put around my room in it, it, you know, a horrible job. Like the way they're put up <laughs> is just the most scrappy looking thing ever. Like it's like duct tape and stuff. Um, <laughs> but the, I, I have them constantly set to like a, just a, like a nice, like warm light, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. for myself. I know a lot of people do like the whole LED strips. In yeah. The room. Yeah. And it's like, it's like for me, it's like for me, I would think it would be like. For me, it would be tacky, hmm. but like I just like a like a just like a nice warm light, just like a single light illuminating my room. Yeah, I get that. I wouldn't want more of that kind of blanket of light. Yeah, I don't, for, that would kind of stress me out in a way. I don't know, hmm. <laughs> you that know, like sense. just having that like, I don't know, like that, I know like a lot of people are into that, you know, mm-hmm. and they find <laughs> hmm. girls are like. <laughs> <laughs> that one girl in online school that would change the color of her room to show what mood she was in. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> one of my exes was like, I, I, I turn it on red when, when I'm, when I'm tired because it makes me sleep. And I'm like, okay, you know what? If, if that's, I, if thought that's red what... Was, I thought red was the horny one. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I've heard really? that. Really? Oh yeah. No, I've, no, I'm not going to the stories. For <laughs> no, but like, yeah, it's this thing. That's one of those things where it's like, you know, I guess that just goes to show that this is different for different people, you know? Like, for yeah. me, I wouldn't want LED lights. Mm-hmm. But, like, for a lot of people, that's comforting. Yeah. Like, for me, just a single warm light is comforting, mm-hmm. you know? So Yeah. And what I was just kind of kind of going to say with the LEDs is, like, you know, at, um, it started as something novel and then kind of became something comforting as well. Yeah, Which, exactly. I mean, there's not, like, a major point that I can draw out of that, but I just thought that was cool to tie those together. So I mean, no, like, things that are novel will become just a comforting part of your life. And then once everything's comfortable, you'll find something different to shake up, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's kind of a... Even if it's just a modification of those things that you are comf- comfortable yeah. with, that's like... Like changing up a playlist. Huh. Yeah, or like changing a light bulb. Yeah. <laughs> you know? There so. you go. It's actually really fun. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, do, do you have any other major examples? I mean, we could probably... We're only at 17 minutes. We could probably talk about a little more. Oh, yeah, or, of course. Or or set the record for the shortest podcast of all time. <laughs> no, let's keep pushing. No, I'm just kidding. It's not like it's a big deal. Um, it's just um, uh, recently, just like one of the minor additions that I made to my room, kind of on decoration now, is that I put up uh, uh, the poster for the most recent show. And, oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I put that up. And just having that as a – I mean, like it – it's just cool to just have those little like yeah, reminders yeah, and stuff. Yeah. I, I put up my, my parents one Christmas got me some game posters. Hmm. I remember. And I have, I have an origins poster, black ops, two zombies. I have a breath of a full size, like a huge poster of the, one of the breath of the wild, um, title art hmm. pieces, which is just <laughs> breath of the wild art is simply gorgeous. Hmm. And then I have another, uh, I have a smash ultimate poster uh-huh. and it's just like, yeah, those things are just, those kind of things are just fun. Like, I want to have more posters. You know, mm-hmm. I want to have like, unfortunately, Stardew Valley and Terraria don't have a lot of really great posters out uh, there. But yeah. like, I want a Mob of the Dead poster so bad. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. that's like, that's like my favorite. But, <laughs> that would be cool. But yeah, like yeah, like posters are cool. Yeah, you know? and um, just like those, I guess it's more of a permanent fixture. Yeah. But just those little things in your room that make it your own. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it, like, it kind of. You know, we're talking about things that influence you, but, like, also, like, things that you influence is another part of that. Just, like, the little means of expression Mm -hmm. and stuff like Mm -hmm. that. I think those also, you know, that's kind of, like, cool changes that you can make in your life. Like, I don't know. I don't have many, like, major examples because I'm not, like... I I thought of something after you mentioned clothing. Did you mention clothing? Uh, No, not yet. I thought of clothing. You Mm -hmm. mentioned something that made me think of it. Mm -hmm. But, no, um, I might have talked about this a little bit somewhere before, but, um... One of my one of my exes basically told me that I that I that I dressed like shit, <laughs> and then I were gonna talk about all this. I ever d- wore was sweatpants and single colored <laughs> shirts. And then I needed to get some drip, like my bestie Lucas. <laughs> yes, they really did say Lucas was the ide- was the I- ideal image of drip. Oh, but 
Either. No, like Lucas would L- wear Lucas, like. I'm not, I'm not laughing at Lucas's fashion either. Definitely not because he, he expresses very well. But. No, yeah, Lucas. Lucas. Lucas has the, you know the riz, the drip, the. <laughs> the riz, the drip. No, I like his style. The, I guess you Absolutely. can call it drizzle. The- <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Because <laughs> like the drizzle is all said. drizzle is like also drip, but with riz. Yeah, and it's like, like water. It's related. perfect. Yeah, because like drizzle, like you know. Anyways, back to what I was oh talking. God. Actually, talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, Lucas yeah. would have like the actual white boy outfit of like flat top shoes, jeans, a t-shirt, and then like flannel over it, right? Uh-huh. But that was like a big look at the time in high school, right? Dude, that's so, you always, know, that's never not a big look. I guess that's true, you know. So, so here's the thing, right? You might call me a simp, but like, here's the thing. My my girlfriend literally told me a way to make me look more attractive. Mm-hmm. That was within something. It was within the boundaries of what I was comfortable with, you know. So it's like, well, shit, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to get those points, mm-hmm. so. <laughs> If I can, you oh, know, if if you, if you can make if you can make the little lady wide eyed, that's that's a big that's a good day. Yeah, you know. There you go. So that was kind of my thought process, but um, <laughs> so I got some um, I got like some Converse style shoes with like the black black did, shoes did with like this the white told on the rims and the laces. One, by the way, oh, you did we? Been. I don't know. Go on though. Well, I probably did. Now, I now, now that you mention it, but no um, <laughs> and then I got some some flannel, mm-hmm. and like I just I remember like the first day. I wore that shirt, mm-hmm. or, I, or I wore that outfit. Mm-hmm. People were like, "Hey, Cam, you look good." You mm-hmm. know, like th- this is different. You know, and like uh-huh. I guess you know. And I mean, again, it's like, back, it's like that's like the novelty. Of yeah, it, it's like know? a pretty, like, it's it's a pretty shallow <laughs> kind of material thing. Yeah, of like I, I usually don't really care. Yeah. But every now and then, you know, it's fun it's to fair, dress yeah. up a little nicer and just. And I mean, I guess another thing too is like, I talked about this before as well. Back when I learned cursive. Hmm. That was just like a fun little thing I could do, you uh-huh. know. And now I write in cursive every day. Huh. So, yeah. yeah, that actually. Uh, now that we're talking about handwriting, that's a little change that I, I made. I think I was, um, I think it was like eighth grade or something, and I really thought my handwriting was ugly. Like I really just didn't <laughs> like it. And you want to know what? I hardly changed anything about my handwriting. In fact, I still think my handwriting is ugly. But now I have very swoopy eye, uh, swoopy um, Y's and J's. You know, and G's, I should, and G's too. So yeah, so I just, I, they're a little swoopier. And for some reason, just that little aesthetic touch of them was just like the the thing that just like made me actually happy about my handwriting for some reason yeah, in my eighth grade tiny Yeah, like I brain. said, humans are funny little critters. <laughs> we really are. So yeah, I mean, did you, um, was there anything else big you could think of? I mean, I think we, I think we hit a lot of different little stories and examples. I mean, any, any mm. profound comments on life? Profound comments on life. Well, I, I mean, guess, like I said, humans are funny critters. I don't know uh-huh. how much further you can go. But. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess in a, in a little wrapping up way, it's just like all of those little things together, you know, we can create for ourselves like a little bit of a, I mean, we create patterns for ourselves, right? Mm-hmm. We create a structure for ourselves and we live out our lives in a very like structured manner. Like, you know, going through, like, school and stuff especially. Like, you know, you have the first, you know, eight years of primary school, then four years of high school, then four to eight to 12 years of college. And it's just like your life is blocked out for you. But what's not blocked out, what's not planned at all is just the little things that you find along the way. Just the little enjoyable things. And, you know, it extends to all things because it's not just, you know the the color of your light it can be the the connections that you make with people on the fly the little interactions with strangers that you have on the corner on like unintended that you ended and end up remembering for years there are so many of those little things that just form together to you know it's easy to get pessimistic when you look at your life as something that is blocked out that is planned but ultimately nothing in the grand scheme of things is ever planned so I guess I'm just saying to appreciate the minutia, appreciate the little things, and just learn to live like that. You heard it here first, boys. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't have anything better than that to say. So, <laughs> I think we're good. <laughs> pretty sweet. I think we're pretty good. That was all right. Nice. We did set the record. This probably is the shortest episode Yo. of all time. This is gonna be the last one in this session. Huh? It's mm-hmm. gonna be episode number twenty-four. Uh huh. Man, it's weird because I so, like I think about like you know, and it's twenty four minutes long. Huh. 
I guess we better stop the recording in the next eight seconds. Oh, no. (laughs) Signing off. Signing off. Oh, God. Signing off, boys.